It is safe to assume, I believe, that everybody here in this church this morning would very much like to have two things. Now there are other things you'd like to have too. But these are primary and basic and everybody present wants them. And they are health and happiness. And let me tell you something, you've come to the right place to get them, for sure. Now, I don't necessarily mean Marble Collegiate Church. Any church will provide them. For in a church, the laws of health are taught. Mental health, emotional health, physical health. And in every church, the laws of happiness are taught more than any place else in the United States of America. That is for sure. Now, when we talk about happiness, we're not talking about some Pollyanny sweetness and light deal. It's strange how some words can be destroyed or vitiated, like uh, love, for example. That's one of the greatest words in the English language, but Hollywood has successfully messed it up. <laughs> but love is a strong, vital, vigorous, tough word. And so is happiness also. I looked it up in the dictionary to make sure I knew what happiness is. And Mr. Webster knows all about words. How any one man knows so much about words, I never could figure out. <laughs> but he's pretty good. He says that happiness is felicity. Do you know what felicity means? Well, it means happiness. <laughs> it also means aptness. What's aptness? It means happiness. It means with it, really. And felicity means that you do the right thing in the right way at the right time. And you're a felicitous, isn't that a beautiful word? Felicitous. Well, would you like to be healthy and happy? Of course you would. I was in a certain place in this city the other day and was seated temporarily when a young woman walked across, pulled up a chair, and sat down beside me. She didn't give me her name, or if she did, I didn't hear it. I would guess she might be 20 years old, 21, 22, a very pretty, sweet, smart, attractive, strong girl. And I liked her right off. <laughs> so she said to me, I want to ask you a question. I want to live a long, 
healthy, happy life. How do I go about doing it? Well, I said, uh, that's a big question. It's stalling for time. <laughs> yeah, she said, I know it's a big question, but I really want to know. So I looked at her and I thought how nice she is. So I took my finger and I put it on her forehead like that. And I said, the answer to your question, young lady, is keep it right in your head. Keep your thoughts good, not bad. Keep your thoughts decent, not indecent. Keep your thoughts full of faith and not doubt because it is in your thoughts that is determined whether you will be happy or unhappy, whether you'll be healthy or unhealthy. Now, there was a professor once of English at Yale University. I didn't go to Yale, but I knew him slightly. He was probably uh, 30, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, one of the most attractive personalities in this country. Everybody loved him. His name was William Lyon Phelps. They called him at Yale, Billy Phelps. And he said, the happiest person is he who thinks the happiest, most interesting, finest thoughts. And that is a fact. Then there was a professor at Harvard. I didn't go to Harvard either. And he was there a long time ago. He's probably one of the few wisest men this country ever produced, the smartest one. He was the father of American psychology as you know it today, which is a big industry, psychology is. His name was William James. And he says, Repeated thoughts wear a kind of psychic groove in the mind, a groove that gets deeper with every repetition. You see what that means? When you think you can't and you tell yourself you can't, and you tell other people that you can't, you've made a groove in your mind, psychically. And every time you do that, the groove becomes deeper until ultimately you can't. That is the way it goes. Oh, if you tell yourself that you're going to fold up when you're about 65 and your health's going to leave you, that forms a little groove in the mind. And every time you tell yourself that, yeah, the groove gets deeper. And the next thing you know, you come to church uh, on a cane. <laughs> or you can't even get here at all and your health is destroyed. Now, a long time before William James ever wrote, there was a man named Ralph Waldo Trine. He wrote a book called In Tune with the Infinite. It's one of the classic books ever produced in this country on the human mind. And I've been reading it for years and I find new wisdom.